Okay. We'll be presenting for you today the hands-on project number 13 about molecular gas and spot formation in spiral arms. So why are spiral arms important? Spiral galaxies are twisted collections of stars and gas that have beautiful shapes. Most galaxies actually have spiral structure, which affects the gas distribution, the star formation, as well as the future evolution of the galaxy. This project takes advantage of open source observational data to characterize morphological properties of spiral arms in order to quantify their impact on star formation, in addition to compare the results with predictions from density wave theory. So Lynn and Chu propose that uh, these spiral arms are not material arms, rather they can be viewed as density waves, which are moving with a particular frequency in the differentially rotating disk. So these spiral arms have a motion uh, related to the underlying disk and the fast rotating gas gets compressed at the inner edge of the spiral arms and forms stars. So we expect to see uh, the gas and the dust on in the inner edge of the spiral arms and star forming regions along the spiral arms. So the next is the adjusting age of NGC 1566 and that's exactly what we see from the observation. The dust is present along the inner edge of the spiral arm and star forming region are present along the spiral arms. We also know that galaxies have flat rotation and the spiral uh, arms are moving with a fixed pattern frequency. So um, we expect to see a deviation between the um, gas arm and the star arm in the inner disk and the outer disk due to the difference in the rotation. The next plot shows the, uh, the here the red curve shows the, uh, the spiral arm and uh, the black line shows the tangent to the spiral arm. The another black line shows the tangent to the circle at the radius r and the angle between these two tangents is uh, the pitch angle. So to explore how these spiral arms organizes the gas and the star forming regions, we have used publicly available fan CO data from ALMA and HLPA from SYNC. So here the top panel represents the CO map of the four galaxies and the bottom panel uh, shows the HLPA map of the galaxies that we have analyzed in this project. We project the CO and the HLPA images in polar coordinates. So what you see here is the four galaxies with the very <laughs> <laughs> x-axis. We drew segments corresponding to the spiral arms. They are straight lines since we assume that the shape is a logarithmic spiral. In the case of NGC 4321, we avoided the region of radii corresponding to the bar at the center of this galaxy. We did this both for the CO images that you see on this slide and for the H alpha images and measured the pitch angles, finding them around 30 degrees. By defining a region surrounding the arm segments, we are able to make an assessment of how much CO or H alpha is specifically located within the arm. It allows us to consider the relative arm strength and whether the gas and star formation is concentrated in the arms. However, it is important to note that the region classification methodology plays a big role in determining these fractions. Nevertheless, we see interestingly most of the galaxies have CO larger than H alpha fractions, with values between 30 to 60 percent for CO and 14 to 35 percent for H alpha. Without C, we compare the two arms. Both pictures on the left showing both CO and H alpha arms drawn to different color because of the function of the spiral arms. As we can see, the two arms are different in their position as well as the pitch angle. Let's see the upper right panel, that is famous MC51, of which CO and H alpha have always been offset. H alpha arms are always on the left side of CO arms. Besides, in the inner part of the galaxy, H alpha is more tightly longer than CO with a small pitch angle. Such phenomena is also seen the right with a composite CO and H alpha color map. Still, golden arms are always at the back of the blue H alpha arms in the direction of the galaxy location. So the density wave theory tells uh, spiral arms are a local density function with a pattern speed slower than inner galaxy rotation speed. Rotation IS and will catch up the arms from behind and travel through the arms. Once the material experiences the density enhancement of on the arms, cooling is faster and the gravity takes control and the molecular clouds drop to both sides. Star formation takes time and several years after, we have both all these stars and emit H-alpha emission. 
this dog already needs the arm, and this is why you see the old dad. In conclusion, we found that individual spiral arm segments are well described by logarithmic spirals. For sleep origination, between 30 to 55% of the emission is associated with arm. For each alpha, this fraction is between 14 to 35%. Given the relatively narrow width adopted for the spiral arm portrait, these high fractions suggest that spiral arms can at least sufficiently collect molecular gas and thus newly formed low passive stars in galaxy disk. CO and H alpha arms generally have systematic offset, supporting the idea of density wave theory of galaxy spiral arms. Thank you. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Um, so I, I'm just, uh, oops, so yes, I'm just curious about the fact that this, uh, you know, this uh, motion along the spiral arm that you see, uh, can it be um, observed um, using, uh, you know, the velocity of the line when you have a kind of an inclined disk? So I guess it should be uh, something like 45 degrees. Um, do you have any idea? Is anyone uh, listening? Uh, we no? are listening. Um, I think I'll jump in and speak that, um, that no, I don't have any idea. So um, that's probably what the deathly silence was for um, your question, but it is very interesting. And thank you for the comment. We'll go and have a look. Maybe yes. we can. And there is a question uh, in the Slack. Uh, uh, so Guylaine is not sure to have understood why the H alpha over CO fractions are very different. Um, why they are different to each other for each galaxy or why they're different between the different galaxies? Um, I'm not sure. So Guylaine is currently writing, but uh, yes, inside the same galaxy. Well, um, CO and H alpha fractions are likely to be different in the galaxy, but um, specifically, I will warn you that these results are very subjective, particularly in our research, because we spent a lot of time trying different ways to define the regions. And so everyone in our group made uh, one of those percentages, which means that um, we're not actually a consistent or comparative study with each other. Um, so that could be another factor that is adding a number of errors to the values that we're seeing. So there's two, two things happening there. Okay, thank you. And the last short question, are there any optical thickness effects? Anybody else in our group want to jump in? Because I also don't know the answer to that question. Please go if you know. I don't think we took optical thickness uh, into consideration in our uh, in our study, have we? I think we just took uh, took the data and analyzed it as is. So I'm not sure if um, if it, it came along. So. Okay, so thank you.